Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're right. never going to get these intros no. very well. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to episode 11 of the Hatching Podcast. My name is John Wheatley. I'm Marshall Haas. Uh, Hatching is a show about new products, ideas, and experiments, and about our company, Need One. Um, sorry if that intro seems a little bit forced. This is the second time I've done it today. <laughs> the AC was on. <laughs> I'd turn it off and wait. Okay. So how's it going, Marshall? It's going well. How are you, John? I'm pretty good, thank you. Good. I'm, I'm excited about today's episode. It's going to be good. Me too. We have a lot to talk about. So we alluded to this last week, but so we just had the... Um, Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday sale for Need Want, and we're going to talk about all the revenue numbers on that. We're also going to talk about our first acquisition, I almost said what the name of it, um, and what we paid for it, why we bought it, all of that. Plans that we have for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also a future app that we're going to make, and then a couple of listener questions. So hopefully this will be an interesting one. I think it'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess we should just jump right into the revenue numbers. Well, so we we have four products. We ran a sale on, on three of them. Three, sorry, four launch products, um, and then another on the way. So for those launch ones where we have like inventory, we we're gonna run a massive sale, and it was literally the biggest sale we've ever had for it. Um, so we we ran the sale from Thanksgiving midday, but we we actually opened it up at midnight um, on Thanksgiving, and then we closed it Cyber Monday at like midnight, um, so basically last night. So four and a half to five days was the total sale length. So for mod notebooks, our, our um, cloud syncing paper notebook, these things, uh, we did buy one, get one free. So full price, but you get two notebooks for one. Um, and obviously notebook you use, you can give it as a gift, you can have your second one ready. Uh, Peel, our super thin iPhone cases, we did 50% off. Kind of the same offer, but obviously just half price on one. Yeah, the funny thing is, because we, we did that because we didn't think many people would want two iPhone cases. Right. A surprising number of people still bought two, though. Yeah. You know, it's that. Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, Which, anyway, yeah. I thought I was obviously, you only have one iPhone, but spouse, gifts. Uh, and then emoji masks, which are our emojis as masks for your face. Um, kind of a, a small project, but we did a, a buy one, get one free on that as well. So that was like the offer. And that was literally the biggest sale we've ever had. So we, we blasted that out. Or should we just dive right into the numbers yeah. so we can backtrack? Yeah. Should I, should I rattle these off? Yeah. Okay. So again, four to five days. Total of sales for Peel was $12,449.03 from 530 orders. Mod Notebooks was total revenue $6,917.80 from 218 orders. And then Emoji Masks was $1,423.12 across 63 orders. So total sales for that period was $20,789.95 across 811 orders. How many days is that? Uh, Five days? We we actually like blasted publicly like Twitter and email like two p.m. Central Standard Time on Thanksgiving, but the sale was open um, first thing in the morning. So how many people. how many days? So five total. Five days. Yeah. So just for some context, you you were saying total sales numbers there, but that doesn't really yeah. say like what sure. kind of a bump that was. Yep. So I made some notes Re on a regular week on yeah. average for Peel we'd get 138 orders. Okay. And during Thanksgiving, it was 530. 30. So that's a, that's a yeah. big bump. What is the conversion rate normally on Peel? Because I have the, the conversion rate for this period. So I pulled the conversion rates for only one of the days when I pulled these numbers, so yeah. they're slightly skewed. Regula like normally, on a normal week, um, Peel's conversion rate from like any visitor that hits the website to actually purchasing yeah. is 3%. It's actually pretty good. So conversion rate... Is that for visits or unique visitors? That can it's right. whatever Shopify, however Shopify The big works traffic number? That they yeah. Get? Okay, that's total visits, not okay. uniques. So, yeah, conversion rate on that period for Peel was 12, sorry, 9.5% conversion rate. So 3% to 9.5%. Yeah. Well, Just by exactly slashing three? the price in half. Or I've written down three. I mean, it probably isn't okay, exactly It's probably three, like three and a half, I think. So, yeah, almost, almost triple. 
And then, do you have mods? Yeah, mods normally one-ish, about one. So that one went up tremendously. Yeah, so it that's- was 7.8% conversion rate. So one to 7.8, yeah, yeah, that's huge. And Emoji then, masks wasn't so big, and I think this it, was because we had a Halloween skewed it vastly. Right, right. Um, regularly, the conversion rate is one point nine percent. Regularly being like on average we across it like since we launched, two weeks before Thanksgiving. Right. No, yeah. two weeks. Or before sorry, before Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Um, but for when we turned on Bow and Go on free, it was two point five percent. So it was a bump, but it wasn't anywhere near as significant as the. It other, was three point six percent across five oh, days. The day that I pulled, it was two point five. Gotcha. So, wait, so, sorry, what is it normally? Uh, 1.9. Yeah, almost double. Yeah. Conversion. Everything else was triple or like 7.8x, which that's actually really surprising for mod. So, okay, and then I pulled stats on conversion rate on unique visitors. All these are on uh, total visits. So, obviously, if some, you know, same person visits three, four times, they're counted three, four times in total visitors, but in uniques, they would only be counted once. So for Peel, again, you said it was like 3% normally? Yeah, 3%. But that, well, this doesn't matter because this is off of uh, total visits, not. So conversion rate on uniques for this period was 12.74, mod was 10.42, and emoji was 4.5. So I'm curious how much of this is the fact that everything's so cheap, or these yeah. are like a good deals versus some yeah. kind of like, weird like buyer intent thing because totally. it's like there's like three factors going into it it's like massive sale mm. which also means there's like this event of like this limited time like oh i should do this now um also we're like pinging the email lists of people that have already showed interest yeah. either which bought one previously scary. yeah um plus yeah it's it's obviously holidays there's tons of intent um you know people are buying tons of gifts during this period obviously yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, I think we're, on the last episode, we were trying to make some predictions on, like, what we would try to do from Thanksgiving to Christmas as far as number of sales and total revenue. So, so far, not including today, you know, that period started on Thanksgiving Day. So, so far, we're up to almost just shy of 21,000. Um, and I think we were saying we were hoping to do at least between, like, 40. And that's what we said. Yeah. But that was over what period? The whole month? No, that what we were saying, the like holiday shopping season, which so Thanksgiving to Christmas, yeah, just before Christmas, yeah, okay. which technically is like Black Friday, but things started earlier this year, yeah. Um, so we're you know we're it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna drop hugely once we you know turn the office off. And yeah, it's it's no longer like that shopping season, but there are right, still going right. to be people buying gifts and that kind of stuff. So totally, it will be interesting to see yeah. where we land. I think if based on these five days, I think our predictions are actually going to be pretty. Yeah, accurate. Yeah, I think so. But we'll see. If if so, the average across those five days so far is like just over. F well, it's like four thousand one hundred and fifty-seven dollars average per day. If we just like kept that up for the twenty-eight days from Thanksgiving to the day before Christmas, we would do one hundred and sixteen k. And we were saying like last week, like we've never done a hundred k yeah. month. I would love to, but obviously that's not going to no, happen. No like. Way. Something I We're thought was interesting, Side Monday was bigger than Black Friday for us. By far. I and I didn't pull the numbers for this, but... Off the top of my head, I think Black Friday we did either four or 4,500 um, across uh, all products. And then yesterday, I think we did like eight or maybe it was like, it was 8,200 hmm. and some change. So almost double. And I th that was skewed slightly, like Pia was featured on this this very strange French yeah. blog, yeah, I, which I drove a lot of traffic. Yeah. But, so that was skewing it slightly, but um, yeah, it's still interesting. Yeah. Interesting data point. Yeah. Um, something else I noticed when I was looking at the numbers a couple of days ago, Marshall, mm -hmm. and obviously you know this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Um, yeah, out of the entire, like the whole past year, uh, Peel has made almost exactly $1 per website visitor. And that's visit, again, that wasn't unique visits yeah. too. Yeah. So that's interesting. So it's like, like yeah. almost, it was like 200 visits off. Here, yeah, so we- So close. In the past year, we've had 87,272 visits and we've made in revenue 87,683. So 87,272 versus 87,683. Yeah. Huge coincidence. Yeah. Well, um, 
You don't think so? Not. I, no, I mean, over those, a year, those numbers are eerily similar. I mean, like month by month, it looks to be about the same. Does it really? I think so. I could be wrong. Maybe. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. Like every single person, pretty much, that, that's who visits the website, .com, yeah. we make a dollar. Yeah. So Which, go to Peel now. <laughs> just, just go visit. Don't buy anything. Just visit. Um, yeah, yeah, I just thought, I, thought that, that was interesting. interesting. So, so we, we acquired Peel, Need Want, the company acquired Peel from you, like August, is it? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Like three months like ago, something? Two months, months before the iOS, iPhone 6 launch, I think. Yeah. Maybe a month. Um, so our, obviously our plans are to grow it, and so far so good. We haven't really done anything. Six. We've done literally nothing with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, we've done some sale. You said last week that like you never did like a well, Christmas true, sale or anything. Well, true. True. I suppose we have like some leaving stuff. tons of money on the table. I, I just mean like, like when I launched that website, I just completely half-assed it. Yeah. Like, yeah. didn't know if it was gonna work. Just like found some like theme. Yeah. Like took some like random picks. Just like threw it up, and it just kind of like worked despite the website being like kind of bad, mm -hmm. in my opinion at least. So I'm looking forward to like actually putting some effort into like. Redoing the website, like taking some nice product shots, like making a nice video, yeah. like take some nice, like lifestyle shots, like yeah. maybe add some more SKUs, like Android cases and stuff. Android, like, I think that's gonna make a big people difference. People are asking about like iPad, iPad Mini. I think like yeah. people were asking about um, hard cases for the Max, which uh, maybe that, I, I think mean there's a, there's a big market for those. Yeah, you'd I guess I personally don't like them. Jason has one. Victoria that's has true. one. Like that's true. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Problem is, I looked into them a while ago, and like, there were very slight differences over um, the different generations of, of MacBooks oh, and also right. the different sizes. So just like supporting MacBooks, it's like fifty skews. Yeah, which when you know, it's, it's not it's such a, lot, a nightmare a when our costs on those are, are fairly low. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, I think, think we should, we iPad cases for sure, and definitely Android. Definitely Android first. We'll probably, and we listed them out. It's probably changed by now, but like the the top four Android phones we're gonna do. Yeah. Um, so that should be fun to play around with. Nice. Yeah. So we should also talk about where all this came from, um, and like what we did. Yeah. For this period of sales, so we didn't do a lot, to be honest. So we did. We have separate email lists for each product, and this is people that have purchased, opted in, signed up another way. Off the top um, of your head, can you remember how many people are on each email list? Because uh, I think that's interesting. Yeah, I think Peel, some have been Peel's unsubscribed like, since we hit the list a yeah. few times. It was like mid 4,000 range. Mod, I think, was like either right at 4,000 or just shy, and then Emoji Masks was like just shy of 4,000 right at 4,000 Was it? Too. Yeah. Wow. I th well, I think it was like 36 or 3,700. That's, I'm very surprised. Yeah, I mean that was like built huh. in like two months from um, Halloween until now. So in total, across all email lists. Plus need one, I think is like around 2,000, maybe just shy, something like that. So excluding smart betting in total, for this sale we pinged about it's hard. So it's roughly sixteen thousand, but somebody it. might be yeah, on, yeah on multiple lists. We didn't combine them and send it out. We yeah. catered each email to you know the context of the list. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we did. We we blasted the the mod list about mod, but also advertised peel and emoji yeah. masks in that email. So we yeah. kind of cross promoted these. So ones. right. So need want we hit. So we released the last podcast the Monday or Tuesday before uh, Thanksgiving. And we alluded to like, hey, the sale's also coming. And we said, hey, we're gonna do something special. And as a need want email subscriber, we're gonna tell you the sales numbers along the way. So I think Friday, we told everyone what Thursdays was. Saturday, we said, you know, up until then, what the sales numbers were. And then when we pinged again for Cyber Monday, it was like, this is what it was up until then. So we, I feel like we kind of got some grace in like hitting the list maybe a little more than we should have, but because we were like offering up something interesting. Um, yeah. And I don't, like our, I wish I pulled this stat, the unsubscribe rate on Need Want was like exponentially less than mm. all the other products. And I think it was because we were offering something up of hopefully of value and of interest. Yeah, it always makes me uncomfortable when we blast the list without actually like giving someone something like, because we were, we were kind of toying the idea of just like, like warming them for the sale, being yeah. like, hey, like we're gonna have a sale in like three days. Look out for it in three days. 
yeah. without adding anything else. Like, I don't know, that kind of there, just makes Yeah, me. there's like two sides. Like when we did the mod launch, there's a lot of case studies in um, like, uh, what is it called? Like trickling? Like, yeah, like drip campaign yeah. kind of. So we, we kind of did something like that where it's like, hey, like as a subscriber, like you opted in for coming soon, you know, this is finally coming, like, and we gave people We gave people We gave value. them value. That, we gave yeah. them, like, this is what the app's gonna look like. like here's here's the, the preview peak. of the video. Like, yeah, there like, was stuff in there. This is what the feature list is gonna be. This is how much it's gonna cost. Yeah. And then I think we did, like, three emails going up to it. And then by then, like, people are so primed of the ones that are interested. When you send out the email of, like, hey, it's live, they've already, like, convinced themselves they're, they're gonna They're ready buy. to do it, yeah. Yeah, you've, you've, like, sold them on it if they're, you know, they were going to be sold. So that, that's fun. You send that email and then you already have all these people convinced and it's just like instant sales right away. And then obviously you like, you know, shoot for press and everything. That was a tangent. Anyways, back to what we did was really just email and then word of mouth and then blasting Twitter and Facebook from each account and then our own personal ones. And I think you and I did it on Thanksgiving at like two. Like, hey, we got this insane sale. Maybe we did definitely did it again on Cyber Monday, and maybe once more. So like three times each, maybe definitely two, and then each individual account we did like three times to Twitter and Facebook. And the only advertising we did is I just experimented with like maybe two hundred fifty dollars across all accounts, uh, like promoting a uh, a post on Facebook, just announcing like hey these sales are happening. Did we track that? Do we know if that actually conversion worked? rate? I didn't install like a pixel. No, okay. I just I wanted to see like what kind of reach we could get. Yeah. Yeah. And it was yeah, we just didn't have the time. So really not a lot. It was just our own kind of audience that we had already built. Um, you know, the the dollar per visit from Peel and all of this have been generated basically from word of mouth it makes me think like in twenty fifteen we should really experiment with Advertising. I agree. I mean, if, if that's, if it literally is, you know, every visit we make one dollar, all we have to do is find a way of driving targeted traffic for less than a dollar. Yeah. Plus, like, you can tweak the dial and, like, we can optimize conversion rate before mm -hmm. we do that. So it's, like, even higher. You know, for every visitor, maybe it's, you know, even more. One and a half dollars. Yeah. 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 So that should be interesting. Yeah. Is there anything else? Cool. I think, I think. Oh. This, this was a nice lead into something we're thinking about doing kind of next year. Oh. So we try to be pretty transparent with things. If you've read our blog before, um, you know, we've done case studies on like the Mod Notebooks launch and how much revenue we made over a certain period of time. Um, we're gonna do a blog post about Moji masks and one of the previous podcast episodes, we said how much we had made up until that point. So we're you know, it's, it's not just like how much money we make, but it's like how we've built things. And I think we've become known for like this transparency. And I think we want to take it a step further and probably do like a financial report to need want email subscribers once a month on the previous month's revenue numbers. And how granular we get on like the breakdown, I don't know yet, but we're definitely gonna do revenue numbers, I think. Um, so yeah, I think we would love feedback on that. Like if that's, is that interesting? Like what, okay, if we do that, like what are the interesting bits that we should include in that? Um, but yeah, that's, that's the plan. And we'll, we're not doing it yet. Obviously we're sharing these numbers, but we'll do it probably early, early next year, 2015. That's all I have to say about cool. that. So now. So talk about the acquisition. The acquisition, yeah. Which we annoyingly teased in the <laughs> last episode. Sorry about that. Should we give? Should we just say what it is and yeah. then and then give the backstory? Yeah, you get the pitch. So, if you've been watching since our first episode, oh, we yeah. actually talked about this service in, in episode, episode one. Yeah, which is just a huge coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the service is called Jarvis, um, and it's basically a virtual personal assistant service. Yeah. Um, the model is it's hundred bucks a month for the starter plan. You get unlimited tasks. You you communicate through text message. And they'll do anything for you, assuming they can do it. Under 15 minutes or less. It takes, yeah, less than 15 it's minutes. It's the only constraint, basically. Um, so it's super useful for doing things like making reservations at restaurants, like finding stores that have a specific item, like sending emails for you, yeah, scheduling, scheduling things for you. Like, yeah. it, it's a huge, 
huge time save for me personally. Yeah. And I've been a big fan of the service. And I mentioned it in the first episode of the podcast. Yeah. So how big of a like fan I was. Four, four months old. Yeah, it's pretty new. Yeah. It's pretty new. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So it's called Jarvis. It's Jarv, Jarv. J-A-R-V dot C-O. Yeah. And the name comes from, if you're a fan of Iron Man and Marvel, it's Iron Man's computer assistant. His name is Jarvis. So the founder, Omar, reached out to you two months ago? Let's just say the other thing first, the other What's huge that? coincidence, which was oh, yeah. also in the first episode, again <laughs> a huge coincidence. We talked about this book Small called world. Everything is Bullshit, and that's actually the name of the first episode of the podcast. Mm. Turns out that Omar was responsible for that book. Yeah, so Omar founded a company called Priceonomics, which has an amazing blog um, that like all of their advertising is funneled into this blog. And it's just interesting things like what does your favorite music artist get paid per performance? Or where does the term X come from? Like just interesting it's really, things. It's amazing. Like it's, it's really hard good. to say like what the category is. It's just like interesting. Like every single stuff. post you're like, oh, I have wondered about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he was a founder, he was a co-founder of Priceonomics, which eventually produced the book, Everything's Bullshit which was mostly chapters pulled from the blog. And we didn't make this connection no. until a month into like the due diligence proce process. Like I was just Googling uh, the founder and it was like, cause he was telling us why he was selling it, what he's gonna go on to do. And I was like, oh, that's makes, this makes sense now. Like <laughs> huge coincidence, it's a so small funny. world. So yeah. Funny. yeah, yeah. So anyways, Omar reached out to you like two months ago, you'd say? About that. Yeah. So he basically, from what I understand, was he started, so he had left Priceonomics, was, you know, playing around with different product ideas. Jarvis was just one of them. Launched it on Product Hunt, got some good traction, and it was showing signs of, like, you know, becoming a really good business. But I think his, like, interests and background lies in, like, financial tech. Um, and so he wanted to basically kind of stop doing Jarvis and do this new startup that he's, I mean, I don't think we really can really, we don't know any details, but he's gonna do a different startup. And that's, that's you know, why he wanted to kind of get rid of Jarvis and sell it to somebody. So should we talk about like the timeline of, of how much it costs yeah. and what we ended up paying for it? I think so. Okay, why don't you? So yeah, Omar originally called me because I think I was pretty outspoken about how much I liked the service. Yeah. I think he, he You're like a power user. Yeah. Let's be honest. And he, uh, I guess he saw the podcast where we talked about it. Like he saw that we were kind of involved with like startups and technology and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so he thought we might be a good fit. So he just called me and we kind of talked about it. And I mean, at that point, we were definitely interested in terms of just kind of exploring it, but it wasn't something we were completely sold on at that point. You know? yeah. We were just like, yeah, like, we'd love to like explore this more and like maybe, you know, yeah. Maybe we can figure something out, but we weren't super hopeful. Um, then he sent over like, he, he gave us a, a preview of the back end, which is super interesting. Um, he also uh, like sent over all the numbers and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And we kind of started talking about it more seriously. But I think that when, when we kind of decided that we were interested, the original price that was put out by Omar, can you remember what that was? It was a range. It was like, I think, 70 to 90 or maybe it was just like around 80k yeah, I think it was around 80 which we just couldn't do at the time at yeah. all we, we just couldn't like, we uh, can afford it. it it was like yeah we just couldn't do it yeah there's just no way so we're like well this is interesting I forget what we actually said but it was kind of like we were thinking more of this and I think we just massively lowballed yeah like what did we say like 15 I think maybe 15 or 20 yeah at the time we were thinking about like me John and a third, maybe even a fourth person, just like using our own personal money to buy it together and maybe not necessarily having it fully under need want. It was just like, this is an interesting like business opportunity. Why yeah. don't we just pull some money between three people? And so he countered, I think it went back and forth a few times, but- I think it was like 80 and we were like 20 and then it was like maybe 40. Yeah. And then it was like, well, it was on like, an auction site too. And we were following that and it was taken down. Yeah. We were in kind of a good negotiating position because it was just like, like we can't really afford any more than like what yeah. we're offering. Yeah. So, so that, I mean, that was our stance. It was like, 
it might be worth more than this, but mm. there's just nothing. I mean, we can't. This is the best we can do. Like, yeah. either take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, so we, I think we ended at, he wanted 30 and we were offering 25. And we we're just like, let's just cut it down the middle and do 27.5. That was a number, and then we were kind of like, now let's do some real due diligence. And Should we talk about revenue first? Because I think that's kind of relevant to this topic. Yeah, so I, I think at its peak, and this might have not ever been the case because of an error that we eventually found, I think it was doing just shy of like nine, nine grand a month. Yeah. With like it 85 paying subscribers. There's a couple higher tiers than $100 a month. There's a, a 200 and a 600. So yeah, so it's a company that's making at the time, about eight thousand dollars a month, nine thousand nine thousand dollars a month in revenue. We were told it was about fifty percent margins, um, and yeah, so the price so like that 45, we kind of landed on was yeah twenty seven and a half, which is still pretty good. If it, if it was just staying consistent on that, it would have paid that's off amazing. itself that's, in a matter of months. That's yeah, and people buy stuff to pay it off on the same growth in like a matter of years. Yeah. So and obviously it's like brand new, it's growing. So it's kind of like, this is a great deal. So we're 27.5. Omar started to, I guess this new startup is kind of showing signs of like getting off the ground, um, whatever. I, I, he's told me some stuff and I don't want to say, like unless he hasn't announced this stuff yet. But basically, he part of the deal was he was going to stick around for like 30 days and kind of like, you know, teach us how to use it and kind of help with all like the nitty gritty on the tech side and everything. And just be around for 30 days. And obviously nobody else is better qualified or even qualified at all than like the only guy that founded it. Yeah. So he was like, hey, I can't do this anymore. So I was like, well, that kind of changes the terms of the deal. Like we can't just get someone else. You're the only person that can do that. So, you know, his time for a month is worth, I mean, you can't put a price on it, but at least it's thousands. So we're like, how about just 25, you know, knock two and a half off of it. It was like, okay. And it was gonna be structured what was it like? Ten up front, ten and up five front. over the next three months. Three months. Over, so twenty-five total. Yeah. Ten up front. Yeah. So then it was twenty-five. We we're like, cool, and we're doing final due diligence. Uh, but I think by the time, so he, some of his friends were on the service, which makes sense, you know, supporting him. So he let them know, like, hey, I'm not going to be the one owning it anymore. And they, so I think like around twenty people dropped off, which he let us know about, which was fine. So then it was around like. 60s it was yeah. like around 60s and you know it always it goes up and down there's churn there's new customers and um which we were comfortable with even then and then so we basically did the deal signed the papers transferred the first amount of money and i got into stripe and stripe even said like 62 customers um but from like my metal lab days and understanding how stripe works i know that like that number that stripe represents or presents like at the top, the big number, is not actually always paying customers. I don't know what the bug is, but like sometimes cancellations and people that have attempted to be charged and like their card has declined it multiple times are like still there and you shouldn't really count them as paying customers. Obviously mm -hmm. there's cancellation, it's mostly cancellations. And some are taken off that number and some stick around and that's the bug that I, I still don't understand. So to Omar's credit, I discovered that it actually had around 35 to 40 paying customers. And I was like, hey, like this was not what we agreed on. And again, like want to give him total benefit of the doubt. I don't think he was, yeah, I didn't think was aware total, of it at all. Yeah. But obviously that changes in terms of the deal. So, you know, that's like a 40 something percent drop, I think. Um, so I, mean, I think it was on like Thanksgiving when we were emailing about this. And it was basically just like, hey, I feel like the fairest thing to do would be 40% drop, you know, to have the final purchase price reflect that drop. And just kind of, you know, so he, he came back and just kind of did the math that I was doing myself. And I was like, this should be, how about 15? And we'll just call it a day. So we're like, cool. That, you know, that's, that we think that's fair. Yeah. So sorry, sorry. The this is a good time to know we're not using the same camera as we did last no, week. We, we we rented this one. I asked the guy specifically if well, there was a thirty minute recording. Before we get it, yeah, it just cut off at thirty minutes. So we had to we had to restart. Yeah. 
the camera's gonna be in a different angle. Probably very slightly. There's probably an awkward transition on the audio. <laughs> We're going to be sitting in different places. Anyways, luckily we know where we left off. Um, but yeah, last week we were bar borrowing a really nice 4K camera from a friend. They're in China, and we had to now rent a camera today. Different setup. So any, anyway, we were at... Uh, uh, so I think we just said the purchase price of Jarvis was 15K. Final yeah. purchase price. Yeah. So now we have this like massive 24-7 problem that we need to wrap our heads around. and. Um, basically figure out operations and, and dial that in. So we have all these cool plans for new features in the future, but number one priority right now is yeah. to just making it smooth out operations. Yeah, there, there have been a couple of, of times when I've submitted a request before we owned it, and yeah. it, it's taken you know twenty four hours to get a response because yeah. there's like yeah. scheduling issues and stuff like that. So, so there's there's two operators. There, I think there was like three at one point. But right now, there's just two full-time operators running it. And that's, that's enough for the current load. Um, but the, the schedule on like when people were online wasn't always perfect. Yeah. So you know, it'll probably take us a month or two to kind of just, well, maybe not dial it in, but at least get it under control. Um, and so number one priority is to lower response times before we open it up to new customers yeah. and, and build out new features. But once we have done that. Yeah, so we have some exciting stuff. We do. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is we're gonna rebrand it, rename yeah. it. Um, I like the name Jarvis. The problem is there's a trademark issue. Mm -hmm. um, I guess Marvel is the, the company that owns the trademark for Jarvis, like as it pertains to yeah. like virtual we, personal assistants. We don't wanna go up against that. So yeah. we're gonna, gonna just gotta leave that alone. And there's also another company in a in similar space. It doesn't do the same thing. It's, it's like a home automation type thing, but yeah. it's positioned as this like, as like virtual assistant, even though it's not really a virtual assistant. Um, so the press has there's already been there's already right? been conf confusion. Yeah, yeah, like there was a TechCrunch article, and I think they wrote about us, but linked to them or the other way around. I, mm. I forget. So clearly, it's already becoming an issue. So yeah. we're just gonna now's a good time just to kind of kill it and nip yeah. it in the bud. So you have a domain. Well, we bought a domain. We bought a domain, it's which is mysecond.com. Yeah. So we're gonna call it Second. And that name comes from like my number two, my second in command. Um, so with that name change, we're gonna do some other things that I think are pretty cool. So right now, like you refer to this thing as Jarvis, or in your case, Jarvinator, uh, but it's it's always Jarvis over an email or you know sending a text. And I think it'd be really easy and cool to allow you to like as part of the signup flow name your. Um, assistant, so like you can name it Becky or Phil or, or whatever you want, and then also create a, a an email at your own company domain for it. So like if I want an Alfred, um, I can make Alfred at needwant.com. And <clears throat> right now everything's over text. We want to also open it up to like CCing your assistant over email to do tasks. So for a hundred bucks a month, it makes it look like I've got this full time assistant named Alfred that, you know, someone reaches out, hey, can we get lunch or whatever? I'll CC Alfred, hey, can you find time? And, and they do the back and forth on, you know, working out the, the schedule and everything. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I think that's an, that right there is just an easy sell for yeah. 100 bucks a month, makes you look like you've got this full-time person. That, I already love that. I like, I love it whenever like I get them to schedule something for me, like a reservation or like a haircut or yeah, something. Yeah. They phone up, and they say, hi, this is John Wheatley's assistant. Like, can I do this, this, and this? So when I arrive, I mean, they already think I'm like way more legit than I actually <laughs> am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's um, cool. It's really cool. So that, that is cool. That's a good yeah. sell for 100 bucks a month. Definitely. So that's something we're going to do. And we're going to just like redesign it and rebrand it and just make it kind of just very nice in general. Yeah. There's um, some like <coughs> interesting proactive stuff that I don't really want to say because we don't know what's Well, we can talk about it. I think, it's, I think we can talk about it. Okay. Well, some of these we don't know if, if we'll actually do it. Right. But, but like we, so basically there's some, like. some low-hanging fruit. We want to do some stuff where like, like right now it's all inbound requests. Like if I have a problem or if I have a question, like I send Jarvis a message. Um, what I think will be interesting though is, is kind of flipping that on its head. And we don't know what these will be yet, but kind of try and kind of figure out some more proactive things that they could do. So for example, um, as part of the sign up flow, you share your calendar with them. Um, so in theory, they can see like, oh, like Marshall's gonna, you know, be in this city or this city or this mm. city or like meeting with this person. So you know, your assistant could do things like 
see you're going to be in Paris next week and be like, hey, like I found some like five hotels for you, or here's some nice restaurants you can check out, or like, yeah, yeah. you know, hey, I, I see you have a meeting with like this person. This person here's like, some info on here's them. Here's their Twitter username. Like, yeah. here's all the f- like, here's some like data about them. Yeah. Um, so I think that will be really interesting. Yeah. I also think it would be really cool, and this isn't we haven't really talked that much about this, but I think making an app version rather than just throwing this all through text message right. makes kind of opens it up to a little bit to like some more cool stuff. So right now it's just through text message, so all you know is like the, the text that they send. But with an app you could do things like you could see where they are at all times. Mm-hmm. So as a customer you could say things like, Hey, like where's a nice restaurant around me? And you could be anywhere. You could right. be in a different city, right. you could be like somewhere yeah. you're not normally or like you yeah. know or even do things like, okay, so your assistant can see that you have a meeting in 10 minutes in this place, but you're like, you know, 11 minutes away. They can be like, hey, like, you want me to get you a cab? Like, you're going to be late for your meeting? Like, I don't know. There's a lot of interesting stuff you can do once you know their location and, uh, and their schedule. Yeah. There, I mean, there's obviously, like, security concerns and you know, some of this would be opt-in, obviously. Sure. This yeah. is all, like, complete Hypothetical yeah. stuff. But I, I think it's going to be a, a, fun, a fun project to, yeah. to work on. Yeah. Yeah, the the recurring model, like from a business standpoint for us, has always been really attractive. Like we wanted to do Mod Notebooks originally as a subscription service, like getting 10 bucks a month, you get a, your notebook, a new notebook once a month, the old one's digitized. That was the original model. And we just love that because it's like, cool if we get a thousand customers, we'll have this much a month in recurring revenue. That like, we don't know what sales are gonna be next month for all our products. With something like this, you generally have a, a good, sense. good sense. There's yeah. there's churn, which is like you know users dropping off, but it's not like you know you still have those people next month. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, sorry. So we um, we're going to be looking for if anybody's interested um, as a part time gig. We're going to be looking for more operators. And I think I think it's. I think it'll be a pretty fun job. The, yeah. the two operators that we have right have now have full-time jobs. Are awesome. Yeah. Just, just by the way, I just want yeah. to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it sounds like a really interesting job. It's like you know, they they seem to like the fact that like you never know what kind of request you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Could be anything. Yeah. You could be researching some article or like, you know, trying to find some obscure bottle of whiskey or like you know, it's it's very like interesting. Yeah. yeah. Kind of position. Yeah, and you um, work from anywhere. You can work from anywhere. You need a phone and a laptop. Um, yeah, ten bucks an hour, work from anywhere, and sorry, it's twelve. Twelve bucks, 12 bucks an, hour. an hour. Twelve bucks an hour. So, um, and then also we're looking for one Ruby on Rails developer to help us with some app stuff. Yeah, um, and some other stuff. But yeah, if anybody's interested, email us at hello at needwant dot com. That goes to both John and I. Um, yeah. Oh. You tweeted an interesting, or I think we need want tweeted an interesting stat the other week. With the acquisition of Jarvis, oh yeah, we now have six companies. Five are active. One is being developed right now. That the one is Airstar, um, which is right now a subscription service for, uh, like an essential subscription service for Airbnb hosts, like shampoos, conditioners, soap, stuff like that. Hasn't launched yet. We're still building it. But if you count that, we have six companies now. And four employees. And four employees that need one. <laughs> so yeah. what, what is it, like 1.5 1. 1. 1. companies per person. Yeah, it's pretty, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We, we talked about this and was like, should we be proud of this? <laughs> 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 um, so we're gonna be hiring someone new. They're already hired, they're gonna join us middle of December. Um, we'll formally announce that soon but with that person who's a designer it'll be 1.2 companies per person which is still it doesn't change much it's yeah. still kind of weird yeah or int- I, yeah i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing anyway we're lean very yeah. <laughs> lean start up my that's, ass that's good that's good yeah we're lean i like the way of looking at it yeah okay so if you're interested in being an operator, you're a Rails developer, or you're interested in the service, um, let us know. Yeah, you, you can you can join the waitlist. We're not going to open the waitlist up like we said until we figure out all the, the you know, just kind of getting our heads around how it works. Yeah. But it's uh, we can if probably you're interested, a, a few more customers. Maybe that's if you're listening to this, 
sign up for the waitlist and then ping us hello at needwant.com and sounds good obviously let us know your name and we'll let you in cool um so next thing we're going to talk about yeah i think it's quite kind of cool for the past four years marshall yep you have been doing this cool thing which is i've been doing some ev- cool things for four years every yep. single day at 8 36 p.m you've taken a photo of whatever you're doing at that specific time yeah so basically whatever is in front of me generally what I'm doing at 8.36 p.m., same time every day, in whatever time zone I'm currently in, I take a photo. And then, so it's a photo and a caption, um, and then built into that, there's some geolocation information that I've never really done anything with. Um, So yeah, it's this project that was started by a guy named Buster Benson. Uh, He, I think he started like six months prior to me starting starting to do it. and so he blogged about it. I think it's how I heard about it. Um, and so it's interesting. Like, day to day, the pictures are usually f- pretty uninteresting. Like, I don't really tweet or put them on Facebook or anything. Right now, I have them going to a Flickr uh, feed, and then I've, I've actually got a dedicated Tumblr. Um, it's 8.36pm.marshallhoffs.com, and we'll, we'll put up the yeah, put little like. lower thirds on the video right now. Um, and so it's public, like you can go see it. But again, day to day, like they're pretty uninteresting. But over time, you can kind of see like these trends of, of life. And like, I mean, I was, I think one of the first pictures, like I was in calculus or something like that in school, hmm. which seems so wow, far ago. Wow, that's interesting. But you know, so it's like Marshall's in school, Marshall is not in school, Marshall's in Chile, like Marshall's working a lot, Marshall gets a girlfriend, like Marshall is working a lot again. like. You know, I, I'm in St. Louis, I'm in Chile, like I'm in Victoria, British Columbia. Mm. Um, you know, like the general surroundings, even if it's like in front of my laptop or like watching TV, you can, you know, see the surroundings and the caption also adds to it. So it's this project that I plan to do for the rest of my life. Um, and so in Buster's case, I think he met his girlfriend, proposed, got married, had their first kid, like bought a house, like all these like major life events happened in like this four or five year period and it's really interesting to look back on you know maybe not to anybody else but at least from like a personal project you know when i'm 50 looking back on this it's gonna be Mm. really really interesting um hopefully maybe to like my kids or grandkids too you know so that's the project um yeah i've been i actually been so i actually tried to do this when i moved to st louis last year do you remember yeah, we, you're doing I like selfies. I try, <laughs> it kind of evolved into selfies. Yeah. It like wasn't selfies. So I like I did it for maybe two months. Yeah, um, and it was like, <laughs> why did you tell everyone that? <laughs> um, well, okay. To your credit, it wasn't just like selfies. It was like you selfie format with the kind of up like like here's what I'm doing, like presenting, like presenting what I was doing. Yeah, like which, which I was, made pizza or like it was hilarious because it was the exact same pose every single day. But the yeah. problem was like there was such a like a high friction thing to do like i remember when i was in a restaurant with you i was like oh, i've got to do it so i like shyly get yeah, up yeah. and just like yeah. do this stupid pose <laughs> so that eventually got old and i stopped doing it yeah. um and i like lost the photos and stuff yeah. but i've been doing it for the past two weeks in gif form and i think it's really cool it's so cool uh, i wish i started doing that from the beginning it's it's really cool so, so i've only i only have maybe like i don't know 12 photos up there right now sorry gifs are up there right now but yeah, you can just like look at them in like a grid format on my website. I'll put the lower third up right now. For it, for the audio, it's J O N W. John, it's John W dot com. Yeah, John um, spelled J O N. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's cool. And already I can I can I can see like, the value of like, like looking back. Maybe and like, two seconds, right? Yes, roughly. Very short. Just so it's like, like you boom. stirring like something you're making, or exactly. like eating a fried chicken through a girlfriend, exactly, or like. Yeah. scrolling YouTube but it's, it's just cool like looking back and because it really takes you back to that moment mm-hmm. even though it's only been two weeks like I'm, I guarantee if I do this for any period of time just that that little split second will like be like oh yeah I remember what I was doing there. yeah that that's definitely a side effect of like I'll be able to look back on some of these and it's such a like obscure thing of like oh I'm doing calculus or whatever but like kind of based on some of the surroundings and the caption I can kind of remember sometimes what the rest of that day looked like wow. somewhat and I, who knows? I mean, this is not scientific at all, but maybe it Makes, helps with like I memory, be surprised. you know, and stuff like that. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah. So, with all of this, 
with it being an interesting project, we've always thought it'd be cool to turn it into somewhat of like a, a photo sharing, social networking type app or service. Um, so I own 836pm.com and .co, and I mean your background is doing stuff like this. Daily Booth was Daily Booth a, was kind of this. Yeah, but with I mean, you're like kind of pre Instagram. It was like selfies on the yeah. webcam, pre like iPhone front facing camera. It w yeah, yeah, because it, it was like back back in those days. Kids used to go into Apple stores to take selfies in the photo booth app. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, that was what you did. You yeah, know? That was yeah. just like a thing that you would go and do. So we, we kind of built this like social network around that, that so, habit. But. Yeah, so the idea is somewhat evolved over time and kind of been added and removed to. But the idea as it stands today is basically an app that reminds you at 8.36 p.m. to take a photo. And right now we just set alarms on our phones. And a lot of times I'll miss it or like I'm kind of in a bad moment, I need to like snooze it for a second. So it'll also like keep pinging you until you actually do it. Um, and then there'll be like a friending mechanism so you can like follow or maybe friend people. And what I think is interesting is if you do it with just a few people and everyone does it, you take your photo and then you tune in to see like what everyone else is doing at that moment yeah, I think and, then you're, and then you're gone. It's, it's, there's two things, like there's value in just doing it without that. Right, right. Which you've experienced for the past four years. Like I've already experienced just in the two weeks I've been doing it. Right. But the fact that like you, you do it yourself because you're, you're, you're adding to this like collection of like memories that you're basically making. But at the same time, you also have this excitement being like, oh, like what were my friends doing at this exact moment? Instant gratification, yeah. Like friends across the country. There, you know. there is no other service that really does anything like that in my opinion like right. yeah you, you can like go on twitter and see what they were doing like when they decided to update mm -hmm. but like having something that at the same time every single day you can all just like see like oh this person's driving this person's doing this this person's doing this like i don't know i think that that will yeah. really kind of like someone playing devil's advocate right now would say like oh like you know it's usually gonna be boring it doesn't matter it's like mm. when i catch up with like some of my best friends back in texas it's kind of like, what have you been up to? And at least having that, you know, like I would s at least have some talking points. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, I saw you're at, you know, so-and-so's house. Or like, I saw you're working a lot lately. Like, sounds like business is going it's, well. Like, you know, there's, there's more, in my opinion, it wouldn't be like limiting and like, now I'm not going to call these people. It's even more, you know, it keeps to talk it's, about. It like keeps those relationships like warm. Yeah, you know? that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, I also like the fact that because everyone's looking at it at the same time, everyone will be like liking and commenting at the same time too. Mm. There's instant gratification. Yeah. We could maybe, when we talked about this, maybe not, but maybe do something where there's some like um, retention or like social element where like you can't see, like I, it'll tell me that like three of my friends have posted a photo now, but I can't see theirs until I also take the photo. So it like makes everyone participate. Um, so like until you take your 8.36 p.m., you don't actually get to see everyone else's. Yeah. Um, which I think could help with like making sure everyone does it and it's not just like you doing it and everyone else tuning in. It could, we could make a gifts too. Yeah, we, we could, could make a gifts. gifts. Cool. Cause yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's the idea that we had. So we want to do this. Um, the idea or the, the point of talking about all this is we want to do it sometime next year, 2015. Um, and if somebody out there, this sounds interesting to them and they're an iOS developer, We'd love to talk to you and maybe maybe do this together as a, or like a joint venture or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think that actually opens up something we've been talking about internally. Um, so if, you, if you've been listening to the podcast or follow us, like we're, we're in a really small office right now and we're about to sign a lease on a, a nice big open like 3,000 square foot office space. And we're only four or five people, so that's way more space than we need. But the Part of the plan with getting a big office and part of, I think, our model with Need Want is to open things up. Um, I, I don't really know what the wording for this is, but somewhat of like a hybrid incubator model where um, you come in and partner with us and, and build an idea with us together and launch it under Need Want. We take you know either minority or majority stake and you get to build it with us and then also launch it under Need Want. And, in my opinion, part of that sell is like, we now have this nice audience that is used to kind of seeing new products from us um, and just, we have an, an audience to market to. And we've also kind of now somewhat kind of gone around the block as far as launching different products. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, I think you and I meet a lot of like entrepreneurs that have different ideas, but don't really know where to take it or, or how to launch it. And so I think this is is to open that up to, to other people. Yeah, like that, all that's, our... that's what Airstar was originally. Yeah, that's a good point. That that's that was the model. Don't say his name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, that, that's that's definitely something I want to do. Yeah, do more of. And you know, really, that is how I joined Metalab before starting Need Want was. I started my last company called Absorb. First product didn't do well. We still had money in the bank enough to like build a, a new product in nine or 10 months. And I was talking with Andrew, the founder of Metal Lab. Um, and I basically pitched him on, hey, let's do something 50-50. Uh, we'll pay our own way or cover our own you know, costs for like six months. If we get to launch it, you, know, you get a product under Metal Lab. If it goes well, you have a new product, you own 50% in. If not, you kind of didn't lose anything. Um, so it was kind of a no-brainer sell to him. To me, it was like we needed kind of we didn't have good design talent internally, and then we needed like kind of a launch pad, in my opinion. Mm. And they had been around for like seven years and had like a, an audience of early adopter designers and business people. Um, so that's kind of where that idea comes from. Is is my experience through that? And it was great, you know. So. The 8.36 p.m. thing is starting to be in that realm. Like, all of our ideas so far have been internal ideas, um, and, and this would be opening it up to uh, external people who obviously want to partner with us. So yeah, that's, cool. yeah. Is that it? We have listener question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, you write down the listener question? Uh, yeah. Because I didn't write down the listener question. Wow, we've been, this has been a long, long episode. We, this is, we could talk about this fairly quickly. In, from several people in different formats, but generally people have been asking us, um, actually, we already covered this. People have been asking where do our sales come from? Oh. We, yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, the interesting part of this, we kind of talked about it in terms of like Black Friday and like the stuff we've done recently. Yeah, but there are But in terms of just like day-to-day -day residual yeah. like, you know, monthly sales. And I think the question was posed as like, yeah, like, you know, you get this press and you get this burst, but like that only lasts for like a day or two. And then like, where does the rest of it come from? Right. To like have real ongoing business. Right. And I think the answer is actually kind of interesting, which is like, we don't, we don't really do anything. We basically like work, it's working despite our lack of, well, our, like, we, all the sales right now, for the most part, for like like residual sales at least, come from like word of mouth and like search engines. Word of like mouth, search example, engines, residual traffic from the, all the press that we have gotten. Right. With that, yeah, um, that's probably. And maybe a little bit of, of some social engineering of like, there's, we've just installed something called like, the app's called Happy Endings on our Shopify cart page. Basically, what, after you check that's out. That's just word of mouth, though. That just encourages yeah, word of mouth. But their word of mouth doesn't do it justice, in my opinion. Just saying word of mouth, like, there's different things different, that you can do sure. and hack together to, like, help word of mouth happen more than just hoping people talk about your product. Sure. Yeah, that, that thing, so the way that it works is, like, the last step of the checkout, it just displays this nice page, which is, like, tweet this pre-written tweet about this thing that you just bought and, mm -hmm. like, like us on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I just kind of thought, like, fine, we'll install this thing. Like, nothing really happened. I was amazed at how many people actually clicked that button. Yeah. Amazed. And well, I, I have no actual numbers, on, but it, it's like, anecdotally, it's probably like, I said 20% on Twitter a few days ago, and I don't think it's actually that much. It's probably more like 5 to 10% of people, which is still huge, in my opinion. Yeah, because that tweet could potentially mean one more, yeah. and, then, and then they do it. I, I mean, so we. <laughs> We installed it on mod and the tweet, the pre-populated tweet. <laughs> we installed it on mod months ago. Yeah. A long time And we time hadn't ago. seen any, like, the tweet was like, just bought an at mod notebooks, which would obviously notify us of a mention on Twitter, and then it links to the website. Never got a ping for that at all. Yeah. I realized when I was searching our domain on Twitter, it was at mod notebook without the S. Yeah. So and <laughs> a lot of people have been tweeting it. At least the URL was correct, just the Twitter handle wasn't. Yeah. So we fixed that. We just installed it on emoji masks and peel. Um, so that's, that's one thing. But to be honest, there's just a lot of opportunity, in my opinion, to figure out distribution, do different partnerships, advertising. 
Um, advertising is like a kind of this huge beast. Another that we thing we do really is touch that much. Yeah. To be honest, we we do have we do content marketing just as like need want as a whole. That's true. But there are also a lot of opportunity we're we're planning on doing next year around different pieces of content on like a weekly or daily basis for each of the products. Yeah. Um, like yeah. mod, there's some ideas. Need um, one's actually our biggest refer to all yeah. products. So that's yeah. that's probably interesting. Yeah. And yeah. hugely valuable. I mean I think there's just a huge as we've now experienced, huge value in building out kind of a, a core following and audience for your brand. Um, and we're still super small, but so far that's been the biggest driver of sales. And yeah. so the plan is to continue doing stuff like that. And this podcast is, is an extension of, of that content and brand that we wanna build over time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's the answer as of today. You know, and that answer will continue to change and grow, but yeah. Cool. I think that's it. Sweet. Again, always let us know how this podcast was, if there's anything you think we should kill or remove. Drop or us an email, hello yeah. at needone.com, uh, or talk to us on Twitter. I'm at John Marshall's at Marshall with one L. Or Needwant is at Needwant Inc, I-N-C. I think um, that's it. Yeah, cool, cool. thanks. Bye. Bye.